fallen angels, a third of heaven that, like a tail, followed the direction of its master. They were cast out of the high place, from atop the mountain of God, above the clouds, never to return. The head of the spear was Satan. He struck the ground as lightning, and the earth did he inherit. The seed of man was proclaimed to crush the serpent. But if the fallen could create something new, something outside of God's will, then their destruction would be avoided. In this video I am to discuss the fallen angels with the goal to entice people to read the works within the Bible so that they may follow, more closely, the Word of God. If you enjoyed the contents of this video, please remember to like, and if you would want to see more, subscribe. Within the book of Genesis, the first of the Bible, God's creation of heaven and earth is described. Six days the Lord created all creation, and on that day it reads, And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. Here we see that the Lord's work is an extension of himself. He is good, as what is good without God. Therefore evil did not exist at this time. That would come about shortly afterwards. Verse 26 reads, And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. The reason for the Lord using the word our, and not my, is because the hosts of heaven existed at this time. Angels watched as God created man, and angels too held his image. But they were not exact, and that difference is what fueled defiance. There are nine types of angels within heaven, these being seraphim, cherubim, thrones, dominions or lordships, virtues, powers or authorities, archangels, and guardian angels. For the focus of this video, we will be taking a look at the cherubims. Within the book of Ezekiel, Ezekiel, who is the author, and who is a prophet of the Lord God, describes his vision, and there appeared in the cherubims the form of a man's hand under their wings. And when I looked, behold the four wheels by the cherubims, one wheel by one cherub, and another wheel by another cherub, and the appearance of the wheels was as the colour of a beryl stone. And as for their appearances, they four had one likeness, as if a wheel had been in the midst of a wheel. When they went, they went upon their four sides. They turned not as they went, but to the place whither the head looked they followed it. They turned not as they went, and their whole body and their backs and their hands and their wings and the wheels were full of eyes round about, even the wheels that they four had. As for the wheels, it was cried unto them in my hearing, O wheel, and every one had four faces. The first face was the face of a cherub, and the second face was the face of a man, and the third the face of a lion, and the fourth the face of an eagle, and the cherubims were lifted up. This is the living creature that I saw by the river of Chebar. From this we discover that cherubims are God's throne bearers and his attendants. They are who represent God's spirit on earth and who symbolize the worship of God. They are also who sit atop the Ark of the Covenant, holding up the mercy seat, where the Lord would come to speak with his people, the Israelites. Solomon, King David's son, who himself became king over Israel and who was chosen to build the temple of the Lord, had images of cherubims within the said temple. And too, before this time, it was a cherubim who was stationed outside of the Garden of Eden now that Adam and Eve had fallen from grace. Cherubims are only outranked by the seraphim, as they are said to be the second of the nine choirs of the angels. In Hebrew their name is said to mean fullness of wisdom, as they admire the Lord God and his omniscient wisdom. Many believe Satan to have been a seraphim due to the seraphim's position, so close to the Lord. However, if we take another look at Ezekiel, within chapter 28 we find the devil's former form. Moreover the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God, Thou sealest up the sum, full of wisdom, and perfect in beauty. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering, the sardius, topaz, and the diamond, 
the beryl, the onyx and the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald and the carbuncle and gold. The workmanship of thy tabrets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou wast created. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Thou wast perfect in thy ways from the day that thou wast created, till iniquity was found in thee. By the multitude of thy merchandise they have filled the midst of thee with violence, and thou hast sinned. Therefore I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God, and I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty, thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. I will cast thee to the ground, I will lay thee before kings, that they may behold thee. Thou hast defiled thy sanctuaries by the multitude of thine iniquities, by the iniquity of thy traffic. Therefore will I bring forth a fire from the midst of thee, it shall devour thee, and I will bring thee to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all them that behold thee. The fate of the devil himself is what is being told before the king. As due to his actions and his own self-importance, pride has entered his heart. As they say, pride comes before the fall, and that fall began with Satan. Thus explains why the serpent was in the Garden of Eden during the time of man's creation. The war in heaven had occurred, and the mutineers walked the plank and fell to the depths. Satan then set his sights on this new beloved creation and sought to corrupt. Adam was the first to be formed, and as he was made in God's image, God's likeness, he could not be tempted directly. It was only when, woman, who was formed from man, did the devil decide to strike. He chose the weakest link, the one who was furthest from God, and he used that connection to climb the chain and reach the unreachable. With Adam and Eve both corrupted, they were now slaves to sin, susceptible to its temptations. This is when the Lord announces three death oracles upon those involved. With the serpent, he says, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Since that moment, Satan and those that fell with him sought to strategize a way to escape God's word, as what the Lord says goes. Satan was to then use what he knew best, corruption. He sent his fallen to seduce the daughters of man, so that no temple may be pure enough for the Holy Spirit, God's will to dwell within. However, he did not know that the one who would be sent to destroy him would be born from a virgin. The Messiah, Son of God, our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, was conceived within the Virgin Mary's womb. He was born to crush the head of the serpent, and although the serpent did strike his heel, resulting in his death, he rose from the dead, defeating sin, its master Satan, and created a way for his children to return to the Lord through believing in his resurrection. Do you now see the importance of the virgin birth? It was not man who was the father. It was the father himself. Father to all creation, who via his Holy Spirit conceived his son. Genesis chapter 6 reads, And it came to pass, when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh, yet his days shall be an hundred and twenty years. There were Nephilim in the earth in those days, and also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men which were of old, men of renown. Reviewing the beginning verses of Genesis chapter 6, we will address the subject of who are the sons of God. The answer is the fallen angels. Within the Old Testament, within the book of Job, we see this term being used. Job is a man who fears God and whose faith will soon be tested, not by the Lord, but by the devil. 
as God in his infinite wisdom knows that Job will not fail him. Chapter 1 reads, Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth and from walking up and down in it. It is important to discern that all, even the fallen, cannot deny the Lord. If he calls, they answer. Satan has only been granted the presence of the Lord because the Lord has deemed it so. We see that Satan, who inherited the earth when he fell, has remained there, wandering. The importance of answering the Lord is further felt, as again they present themselves, and so too does Satan. Chapter 2 reads, Again there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them to present himself before the Lord. And the Lord said unto Satan, From whence comest thou? And Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. These are not the only instances of the sons of God being used within the book of Job. As in the latter chapters of the book, the Lord is challenging Job on his understanding of creation and all that is related to it. Chapter 38 reads, Where wast thou when I laid the foundations of the earth? Declare, if thou hast understanding, who hath laid the measures thereof, if thou knowest? Or who hath stretched the line upon it? Whereupon are the foundations thereof fastened? Or who laid the cornerstone thereof? When the morning stars sang together, and all the sons of God shouted for joy. Here the angels rejoiced in the making of the earth. There is an importance in the use of all, as this was before the creation of man, and so before division would be sowed. There is also the topic of the night sky being representative of heaven. But the subject of how Saturn is connected to Satan is best saved for another day. On the topic of what forms the angels take, we know that the cherubims have the face of man. However, angels may also take man's whole appearance. An example of this is within Genesis chapter 19. This is an excerpt from the events of Sodom and Gomorrah. Abraham's brother Lot lives in Sodom with his family. Abraham pleaded with the Lord to not destroy the city until any who were not wicked were removed. The Lord agreed and sent the two gentlemen, who were angels in physical and ordinary form, to go and retrieve Lot. Chapter 19 reads, And there came two angels to Sodom at even, and Lot sat in the gate of Sodom, and Lot seeing them rose up to meet them, and he bowed himself with his face toward the ground, and he said, Behold now, my lords, Turn in, I pray you, into your servant's house, and tarry all night, and wash your feet, and you shall rise up early, and go on your ways. And they said, Nay, but we will abide in the street all night. And he pressed upon them greatly, and they turned in unto him, and entered into his house, and he made them a feast, and did bake unleavened bread, and they did eat. Here we see that angels are able to interact with the world, like a human would. They can eat, drink and digest food without causing an issue. They are spiritual beings who have taken a physical form to interact with a physical world. The reason for the focus on this fact is it helps explain Genesis 6. Rereading verse 4, There were Nephilim in the earth in those days, and also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men which were of old, men of renown, the sons of God which applies to fallen angels, as discussed with Satan in the book of Job, took upon physical appearance. This unholy communion bore children who were the Nephilim. The meaning of the word Nephilim is both the fallen ones and giants. The daughters of man would not survive the birthing ending in their deaths. These offspring would then breed between themselves creating the biblical giants that are described throughout the Old Testament. If you wish to learn exactly who were the descendants of the fallen, then please see my previous videos. Within my mentioned videos, I explored the accounts written within the Book of Enoch. The Book of Enoch is an ancient Hebrew apocalyptic religious text, ascribed by tradition to the patriarch Enoch, who was the great-grandfather of Noah. The Book of Enoch contains unique material on the origins of demons and Nephilim, why some angels fell from heaven, 
and an explanation of why the Genesis Flood was morally necessary. The Book of Enoch has been a part of the Ethiopian Bible for 1600 years. Both rabbis and early church fathers considered it canon. Second and third century church fathers, such as Justin Martyr, Irenaeus, Origen, and Clement of Alexandria, all seem to have accepted Enoch as authentic. Tertullian even called the Book of Enoch Holy Scripture. Enoch chapter 12 reads, And I, Enoch, was blessing the Lord of Majesty and the King of the Ages, and lo, the watchers called me, Enoch the scribe, and said to me, Enoch, thou scribe of righteousness, go, declare to the watchers of the heaven who have left the high heaven, the holy eternal place, and have defiled themselves with women, and done as the children of earth do, and have taken unto themselves wives. Ye have wrought great destruction on the earth, and ye shall have no peace nor forgiveness of sin, and inasmuch as they delight themselves in their children, the murder of their beloved ones shall they see, and over the destruction of their children shall they lament, and shall make supplication unto eternity, but mercy and peace shall you not attain. The mentioned watchers are angels who were tasked with the observation of man. They forsook their charge and not only bred with the daughters of man, but taught man forbidden knowledge. They taught humans magical medicines, incantations, and the cutting of roots. The origin of folk medicine is therefore ascribed to these angelic beings. The children of the angels were giants who stood 300 cubits tall. These giants consumed so much food that the humans could not sustain them anymore. Because of this, the giants then proceeded to eat the humans, as well as all animals. Enoch notes that people of this period drank the blood of animals. In the biblical flood story, the Noahic covenant includes a command about consuming blood. Therefore, first Enoch is a reflection upon this command, which was given because the antediluvian world did in fact consume blood. Is the term watchers, which refers to angels, found within the Bible? The answer is yes. The book of Daniel makes references to watcher angels. Chapter 4 reads, I saw in the visions of my head upon my bed, and behold, a watcher and an holy one came down from heaven. Here we see that Daniel is precise to note that the watcher angels are holy, lending to the possibility that some are not. With the face of the earth corrupted, due to the fallen angels' involvement, the earth was flooded. The events of the biblical flood deserves its own video. However, you can hopefully see the widespread depravity that Satan had caused. When the Lord looked down upon the earth, he recognized not what walked upon it. The fallen angels not only bred with women, but they defiled every creature of earth, air, and sea. They had corrupted their mind, body, and soul. They were perverted. The only thing that remained pure in God's intended ways and image was Noah and his family. The flood wiped out all those who breathed the breath of life. Those that walked were drowned, and their spirits became disembodied. They could not go to heaven, nor hell, as those places were not made for them. The name of these spirits is also the Nephilim. They are spirits of the fallen, of the defiled, and even of giants. Those that fell with Satan were a third, but the number of offspring of the fallen angels, and those that they corrupted, is unknown. Therefore it is the spirits drowned by the baptism of heaven so that the world could be made pure is who possess and oppress us today. To conclude, the Nephilim are those that fell with the first to fall. They are those who ruptured out of their mother's womb and they are those without heaven or hell. They are the offspring of evil who only know evil. They left their station and disobeyed their captain. They fell for lust and harbored sin. They are ships whose sails are painted red from wickedness, attempting to fly against the winds of punishment, but none may overcome the presence of the Lord. He is a tsunami of righteousness, a lion of virtue, a thunder of judgment, and all will hear his roar. As mentioned in the beginning of this video, the aim is to get you interested in the works of the Bible. If your interest has been piqued, then please read the original text yourself. I have avoided repeating a lot of what has been previously mentioned in my other videos, so I encourage you to watch them, as the subject of the Nephilim has many facets. If you have additional commentary on the fallen angels, 
and the events discussed within this video, then please leave a comment. I look forward to reading them. Additionally, if you have a different topic that you would like to see me tackle, then again, please leave a comment. If you wish to support the work I do here on this channel, please see my Patreon. You will be given exclusive access to additional content. On that note, thank you to my patrons and channel members. I am blessed to have your support. If you enjoyed, please remember to like and subscribe as it helps the channel immensely. God bless and goodbye.